In the second section of the Geospatial Analysis Basics lecture, we will talk about raster map algebra. Raster map algebra is used to compute a new raster map using expression, which is built by combining logical or arithmetic operators or mathematical functions to existing raster maps. So, we can write it as follows. This will be the resulting map, and this resulting map is computed as a function of different maps, dif different raster maps. And the operation is local, that means that this function, this function is applied on per cell basis. So it is applied for each corresponding cell independently. Some uh, GIS systems have also tools for focal operators within raster map algebra. They support moving window calculations. Each software has its own syntax. They are very similar, but there are some differences. So it is good to know the specific syntax and operators and functions which are supported by each software package. What kind of uh, functions and operators we can have? So we have usually a set of logical operators and or not if, if different types of if statements. Then there is also a set of arithmetical operators and a broad, broad range of mathematical functions so that we can build relatively complex equations and condition statements for computing new rasters. It is important to also get uh, familiar with integer and floating point rules. And again, the implementation uh, de depends on the software, but usually if the function is applied to maps that are all integers, the resulting map will be integer. If at least one map is floating point, the result will be floating point. And this is important because if we forget about this, we can get completely wrong results. Very nice example is NDVI index or greenness index computed from Landsat channels 3 and channels 4. The equation for uh, NDVI index is that you compute the, dif the difference between fourth and third channel is divided by sum of fourth and third channel. These maps are integers. So if we take these as integers, you can see that the difference will be always smaller than the sum. So what will be the resulting map? Here is the third channel and this is the fourth channel. How will the map look like if we compute this division using only integers? It will be zero because this division leads always to a number which is between minus one and one. So it would be like 0 0.5, 0 0.9, minus 0 0.4. And if it is computed with integers, the result will be integer and the decimals will be cut off and you get zero. So we need to transform the computation to floating point. And depending on the software, uh, sometimes it's enough just to multiply it by a floating point number. And then if one of the, in this expression, is at least one floating point number or at least one floating point map, the entire computation is done with floating point numbers and result will be floating point. Or you can convert this expression and this expression to floating point, then you are dividing to floating point numbers 
and you get a very nice map uh, of greenness index. And you can see that it varies from minus uh, 0 0.96 to plus 0 0.98. Another powerful tool in map algebra are if conditions. And the, these logical expressions can be applied to both continuous and discrete data or their different combinations. And they can be used for complex reclassifications, for masking and overlays. Just a very simple example. For example, we uh, want to find all forested areas uh, that are um, in locations that have elevation greater than 120 meters. So our result, resulting map will be based on a condition that the uh, class will be 5, that's the forest, and at the same time elevation will be greater than 120 meters. If this condition is fulfilled, those cells will be assigned the elevation. All, all the other cells will be assigned zero or null, depending on what you want to do uh, with the map. So it will look something like this. So all of these areas, we are showing the elevations only for those areas that are forested. One important uh, concept that we need to deal with when working with map algebra and when working in, uh, a GI, uh, with GIS in general are null data. These are, uh, these are the grid cells that don't have, uh, where no data are known. So it is different from zero. And each software has its own rules on how to handle uh, these data in MAP al algebra operations. The general rule is that if a cell, null, cell is null in at least one MAP, then it is null in the resulting MAP. So that means that any null cell will propagate all the way to the uh, resulting MAP. And we, you can use if statements to test for null and assign something different. There are also special operators that allow to handle null data in a specific way. And you need to look at the manual for the system about how these special operators look like and how they should be applied. So let's compare uh, the difference between null, hand, null handling and zero handling. So for example, here we have a, an SRTM raster map and this SRTM raster map has zero values wherever we have water. So let's say here in the area where we have Johnson Lake. And what we want to do, we want to replace uh, part of this digital elevation model with LIDAR-based uh, digital elevation model, but we have it available only for this area and everything else here is null. So what will be the result? So we said that the general rule is that wherever is null in at least one map, the result will have null. So the nulls were propagated into the result. Zero is different from null. So if we compute, for example, this result, if it was computed as an average of these two maps, so we have uh, taken SRTM plus LIDAR div divided by two, then this value will be 51 if this value is 102. So the zero is handled as zero, as a number, and null is handled as null, no data. And it essentially wipes out the information. Now map algebra can also include focal operations. Uh, 
uh, applied with moving window. And this can be used for filters or, or simulations. And it's usually slower than the neighborhood uh, operations uh, modules that are implemented in C, but you can do very specific custom-made uh, uh, filters, for example. Also, some uh, map algebra tools uh, support operations of raster map subsets, so you can define the, the region for which you want to uh, apply the, uh, the algebra expression. Or you can use map algebra to create new maps uh, representing certain functions, either a tilted plane or a little hill, uh, when you want to, uh, for example, do some tests or simulations. And the neighborhood operations implemented in map algebra can be also used for modeling dynamic processes such as fluxes and diffusion. You can use uh, a and map algebra expression to generate a tilted plane. So this is just very briefly overview of map algebra and the best how to learn map algebra is really to do some concrete examples. And in our, in our assignments, we will use map algebra quite frequently. Let's now look at another basic operation and that's patching and overlay. Patching is used to merge several neighboring raster maps. Many raster maps, uh, especially the larger ones, come in tiles and to create a single map we need to patch these tiles. Or uh, we can combine different raster maps by filling in nulls in a base map by some different by values from a different map when patching maps we need to be aware of the resolution we, and we also need to be aware of the whether the data whether the tiles were projected or not so for example when patching the tiles if the tiles were first reprojected and then merged then you can get these slivers and those need to be filled. And again, here, when you are filling them, you need to be aware whether you are working with continuous data, then you would use interpolation. If these are qualitative data, then nearest neighbor would be the best method to fill the hole. This is another type of patching. For example, if we wanted to, uh, to drape a digital elevation model with lakes displayed in blue color uh, in Envis, we need to patch the digital elevation model with the, uh, with the lakes raster into a single map. And here in this example, we start with roads, the roads are patched with lakes, and then everything that is still null is filled with um, elevation and these three maps are merged into a single raster map that can be then draped, for example, uh, on the digital elevation model uh, within visualization tool. Then another important pretty basic operation is reclassification and rescaling, where we are changing the values in the raster maps based on certain rules either based on intervals or based on individual values or based on uh, an equation. And for the equation, it would be rescaling. And there are many different types of rescaling. Uh, the simplest one is just linear, but we can also have histogram equalized uh, rescaling. Here is an example for slope. Uh, this would be the original histogram. Uh, original map, so you can see that most of the values are between 1 and 3 degrees. If these data are uh, rescaled using equal interval, we will have most of the uh, most of the values will be within first two categories and on, almost nothing in the rest of the categories. Then for certain applications, if we want 
to have uh, to set the rescaling in such a way so that each category covers approximately the same area we can do histogram equalization and then uh, then the reclassification will look like this so the the first five intervals will be one degree interval intervals and the sixth uh, sixth interval will have all uh, slopes between 6 and 39 degrees that are in the uh, in the data set and then you can see how the grid cells will be distributed rather uh, uniformly across all of these six uh, six classes now reclassification uh, uh, when we are doing the reclassification again, we need to uh, distinguish between discrete and continuous data. Discrete to discrete is uh, relatively uh, clear where we define the, the identification numbers or the attributes, a uh, set of attributes that are assigned a new attribute. So in this example, uh, we are uh, reclassifying zip codes to cities. So this would be, now these two zip codes uh, plus this one will be reclassified as South um, Raleigh. These two zip codes will be reclassified as Cary. Then we can also reclassify continuous data. Here is a good, very common example. Uh, we can reclassify aspect, that means orientation of topography, which can be between zero and 360 degrees into four cardinal direction. For example, for an application where we really want to have just a simple map that shows where north, west, south, and east is. And then the reclassification is based on interval rather than individual values. So finally, we will show one example of a very simple reclassification that is used, for example, for erosion modeling and for exploring various land use scenarios. Here we have a land use map with uh, several land use categories. And based on these land use categories, we can assign erodibility factor. And again, we will be just assigning for each category a new value. So, for example, for winter and spring, here are the values of uh, uh, erodibility factors. So you can see that for forest, it's a very small value. For bare soil, it's thousand, more than thousand times more. Uh, for vineyard, it's again thousand times more than dense forest same for agriculture and then we can create different land use scenarios by reclassifying these uh, these land use values to different types of cover for example during the summer we can lower the c factor the land cover factor um, to reflect that there is for example a dense uh, um, dense uh, plant cover uh, during the growth season and then the maps will look like this this is the original map and this is the winter c factor summer c factor and this is then used as an input into the erosion model